Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to a special edition of Around the Peninsula and it's special because I am here now with one of Rancho Palos Verde's famous and one of the Rancho Palos Verde's most famous past mayors, Larry Clark. And we are so happy to have you here, Larry. Um, you are here to once again share what I think is the most courageous story and battle that you have fighting pancreatic cancer, which is, we all know, um, one of the most deadly cancers out there. And we're so happy you're here. 20 months battling this and um, you're just here just to share what's going on. Right. Well, thank you, Liz, because uh, it's truly a blessing to be here. Um, just to give uh, the, the viewers a perspective on pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is the deadliest cancer in terms of survival rate. And let, let me kind of foot stomp that. Um, in 2013, approximately uh, 45 to 47,000 men and women in this country will be diagnosed with this disease, this cancer. Um, and in five years, in 2018, only 6% of those individuals will be alive if things don't change. It has a 6% survival rate at five years. So another way to look at it, for each 100 uh, pancreatic cancer diagnosed patients this year, and it strikes men and women equally, um, in five years, in 2018, there will be six left. That's how bad this disease is. There's nothing close to it. And the, the projections are if we don't really get this under control, by the end of the decade, it'll be the second deadliest cancer behind lung cancer in terms of numbers of death uh, in America. So it's, it's incredibly uh, important to talk about it. A year ago, we had an interview. Um, I was seven months out from a life-saving resection surgery uh, where I lost uh, most of the tail of my pancreas. Um, and I lost my spleen and 20% of my stomach. And um, um, my, my surgeon at Cedar sinai Dr. Nicholas Nissen, basically saved my life. But that's not the end of the story because this cancer is one that comes back and 85% of those that have it, even the 10% that can have surgery. One of the other scary things about this disease is it has very generalized symptoms. And as a consequence, most uh, people who are diagnosed with it are diagnosed too late. There's no blood test for it. There's no early, really affirmative uh, diagnosis, diagnostic tool for pancreatic cancer, as there is in many other uh, cancers. And so um, as a consequence of that, um, it turns out that 80% um, of those diagnosed, though, um, pass within the first year. And the fact that I'm uh, 20 months out, hopefully will make, obviously, two years in March of this uh, 2015, um, I feel very blessed. Well, we all know you're a fighter, whether it's when you're the mayor, whether in your military background, whether all the things you do on the Coastal Commission, you are focused and do your research. <laughs> and, and, and we see that in you, and we are all there for you, championing right by you. So I'm have so pleased, because it was a year ago, like you said, we were here, and I remember talking to you. Um, if you could just share with residents sort of your story, like you say, it's difficult. You don't, you, you, there's really hard, the symptoms don't show up till almost too late some, for a lot right. of people. So tell us what happened to you. Well, um, in um, about December, January of 2000, December of 2012, January of 2013, I started to feel um, a, a general discomfort in my abdomen, and that's one of the symptoms. But it could, you know, that could be a gastritis, it could be irritable bowel syndrome, it could be, you know, an ulcer. It wasn't uh, really painful, but it was there and it didn't go away. And then I was started to lose some weight. I was working out. I had retired. Um, in 2012 after 40 years in national and international space programs for the U.S. government and NATO. And, um, and then I started to feel like it was difficult when I tried to digest food. Um, I'd had a, a back pain, a center, center back pain for a year, but I thought that was uh, from old uh, basketball and other things. Those were the kind of symptoms I had. I also turned out, and they've just, research in the last year has shown that some pancreatic cancer patients end up with a very peculiar bad breath caused by bacteria in the gut 
caused by the cancer in the pancreas. And, and actually, I had that. And my wife, Becky, kept noting it. And I thought, you know, I don't know, you know, what is this? You know? But the fact of the matter is that all the symptoms that I just mentioned um, are very generalized and often misdiagnosed, frequently misdiagnosed, and many times not paid attention to by those that have it. The only affirmative way to diagnose pancreatic cancer at this point is either through a CT imagery scan or an MRI. And that's a very expensive test, imagery test, and people don't typically get those um, unless um, there is something that they think is serious. But with these symptoms, they typically don't get it. Now, if the uh, cancer in the pancreas is in the head of the pancreas near the bile duct, uh, you can look jaundice, and that is obviously a sign of it also. Mm -hmm. So part of the problem is awareness of the disease and awareness of the symptoms and staying on top of it. And once you were, you were diagnosed, I can't, I mean, that day must have been horrific because we all know when you hear pancreatic cancer, you think this is a death sentence. Well, to be honest with you, um, it took me, it didn't take me long to um, sort of um, process it. And um, from the very moment that, uh, it was a little surreal uh, when my uh, gastroenterologist, Dr. Uh, Jerry Cohen in Torrance, um, told me that I had pancreatic cancer. Um, I, uh, I immediately said, I'm gonna beat this, you know, and I didn't know enough about it. I had some friends that had passed from it. Uh, it turns out when you look around, you find many, many people who know either friends or family mm -hmm. who have passed from this. And even doctors cringe when they hear pancreatic cancer. That's how deadly this is. So for me, I, I, I reflected and I said, you know, I don't think it's time for me. You know, um, I had just turned uh, 64 and uh, I had had a great life in a, a number of uh, areas um, in the community, in elected office, in, in my career. But I, I thought, I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this. And the fact that I had life-saving sur uh, surgery 10 days after diagnosis and then got into a, a breakthrough clinical trial for a year, I was getting uh, experimental pancreatic cancer vaccine. And that really kept it from coming back, I believe. It turned out, and to update um, everyone, what happened when that ended, which was April of this year, um, the trial ended. The uh, vaccine was no longer available because I was basically past the one year in the trial. Um, over the summer, my cancer came back, which really surprised me. It came back in my liver. And it came back in a fairly large tumor, a 6.8 centimeter tumor. And uh, it was affirmatively diagnosed um, in the beginning of October. And, and for you, do you had symptoms, or how did you know it was back? I mean, you're I, well, there's w there's one marker that can um, sort of indicate pancreatic cancer. It's called a CA19-9 blood test, and it measures cancer antigens in your body, okay. in your bloodstream, I should say. And uh, my markers after surgery were all the range for that for normal for anyone is zero to 34 or 36. My numbers were all, when it was tested almost every month, around 5 to 10. Over the summer, as I continued to get this blood test once a month, it, it kept going up. And uh, when I was diagnosed, it was um, um, in the 90s. And uh, it can be in the hundreds or thousands for some people, but I had a feeling something was going on. Um, and then towards the, spring, uh, the fall, I started to uh, lose weight again. And uh, that's also a, a symptom of uh, cancer, mm -hmm. you know, when you start losing weight, uh, because I was eating normally. So uh, in consultation with my, I have a great, and I'm very blessed to have a great medical team at Cedar sinai And uh, uh, I went into a new clinical trial uh, called the HALO clinical trial, where I got two uh, cancer vaccines and an experimental enzyme. Um, I did that for t uh, approximately two months, but the experimental enzyme had such a negative side effect where it had very extreme um, muscle cramps throughout my body that it, it completely changed the quality of my life. And as a consequence, uh, we, and then it affected my heart. 
Okay. So, so we that stopped that. So we stopped that and continued with the two uh, vaccines, Abraxine and Gemsar, which are the two primary, uh, va uh, not vaccines, uh, chemo, chemos for pancreatic cancer. Uh, and then uh, last week, I had a, um, um, a CT scan and, and it didn't show any reduction in the tumor in my liver. So as a consequence, with my research oncologist at Cedars, Dr. Andrew Hennifer, and my uh, surgeon, Dr. Nick Nissen, and the whole team, uh, we decided on a new tailorized approach. We stopped that clinical trial, and uh, I'm about to embark on a, an approach where I'm going to get a what's called a platinum chemo, which um, is a whole new advent for uh, pancreatic cancer, uh, but has been shown to be effective, particularly with uh, pancreatic cancer patients who have a BRCA2 mutation, which it turned out my genetic testing showed I have. So I'm going to start that al uh, along with um, a very interesting approach to the uh, tumor in my liver where I'm going to be um, having micro um, if you will, bullets of radiation put into the tumor, delivered to the tumor to kill the tumor mm -hmm. without doing external radiation. It's through a, a very interesting uh, process that um, is pretty much state of the art. So this treatment, um, you're in it now, and so what just about to start. Okay, and so you're hopeful. Well, yeah, I, you know, and I have some options, backup options, and one of the things with pancreatic cancer for anyone who is diagnosed, you have to believe you can beat this disease and then you have to get the best medical care you can find and, um, and, and have options, you know, where you can have options. And through the process, um, you, um, what has been helpful to you is you have become completely involved with an incredible organization working so hard to beat this, raise awareness and uh, call the uh, Pancreatic Action uh, cancer Network, PanCan. Right. Right. Um, in fact, PanCan honored you a year ago for being, uh, it was called the Spirit of Hope Award, and me, me and many members of the community came to watch you get honored. It's a rare honor that they give out nationally to someone that's giving so much hope. I mean, you really did. I mean, you went in probably and they told you, you know, you don't, it doesn't look good, and you just turned it right around, and then you went out and advocated for everybody else, and so we thank you for that. Well, I, you know, I was incredibly honored. The, pancre the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is, to me, the most amazing nonprofit working pancreatic cancer in the country. Um, it started by a lady who lost her father to pancreatic cancer um, 15, 16 years ago. Yeah, and that's pancan.org, and I'm bringing that up because that is a great resource. As we sit here talking about your story, for anybody watching, that this is affecting their family right now, and it's very scary. Right. Um, but it's just being able, you have to move quickly, I'm sure, and get your resources, and this is a group that can do things like that for you, right? Yeah, they're amazing. They have patient services like no other. They uh, have um, um, liaison services for patients and families. They have the largest uh, inventory of uh, clinical trials up to date in the country in terms of where they are and, and how to apply. They have um, um, staff members who uh, will liaison with you. Uh, it's an amazing organization. They're not only though focused on pa uh, patient services, they're focused on research right. and awarding research grants to advance the state of, of understanding and uh, treatment for pancreatic cancer. Right, because the issue with like the idea of you know when you need more research, you need more treatments available, options, and all that goes hand in hand. Right. Um, I know Pan can. I think I read that in terms of where the dollars go, federal dollars, right. for funding cancer research overall, like two percent. I thought I read went just to the pancreatic cancer. Yeah, research. it's, a, it's, it's an amazing. Uh, such it's, a small number. It's amazing because it's five billion a year. Year, um, across all cancers that the federal government uh, allocates and last year the deadliest survival cancer pancreatic cancer got 105 million and why is that um, because there hasn't well f if you for example in breast cancer which is a terrible disease and strikes so many women in this country but yet there are so many survivors that you have a built-in advocacy everywhere for, uh, for breast cancer uh, research and support. 
That hasn't been the case with uh, pancreatic cancer because there's so few survivors. And many of the families of those that are touched by this and pass suddenly um, are so taken aback by it that uh, they don't want to get involved. But in fact, um, uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network has built a network of volunteers across the country who are the main engine, engine for um, pushing awareness and helping raise funding for right. research. And I know pushing at the, at the um, congressional level, we were talking that uh, Congresswoman Janice Hahn um, has now spoke twice on behalf of this cause, including bringing you up. And I it was on the floor, on of, the the floor. of the, um, of the house. She uh, talked about your fight for survival. And I want to take a quick break so we can share with um, our viewers um, when Congresswoman Hahn went before Congress to say, you know what, we need to bring more awareness and more money to this cause. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on World Pancreatic Cancer Day in solidarity with those who have been affected by this deadly disease. I join members of Congress, my staff, and many others walking the halls of Congress today, wearing purple for purpose, to convince my colleagues that we must increase funding for pancreatic cancer research. Too often, pancreatic cancer diagnosis is a death sentence. We can change that. Fifty years ago, breast cancer was also killing women at an alarming rate, and women are now fighting and beating breast cancer because well-funded scientific research has vastly improved screening and treatment. I'm thinking today of my friend Larry Clark, a former Rancho Palos Verdes mayor who has found the strength to fight pancreatic cancer and advocate for others. Let us answer their call today. Let us wage hope, and let us try to double the pancreatic cancer survival rate by 2020. And during Congresswoman Hahn's address to Congress when she was speaking, she was wearing purple, as we are, and mm -hmm. she said purple for purpose. And talk about that purpose and the Congresswoman being out there as well. Right. Well, Janice Hahn is an amazing uh, member of Congress, and she's really embraced the cause of pancreatic cancer. I guess a lot of people don't know this, but she shared with me that her father passed from pancreatic cancer many years ago, Kenneth Hahn, who's an icon yes, in um, Los Angeles County. Uh, serving 40 years on the uh, Board of Supervisors. Uh, she's a, a very good friend. Uh, I was uh, very taken back that she, uh, when she spoke on the House floor, um, the last time was just recently on the first World Pancreatic Cancer Day, November 13th this year. By the way, November has been designated by the state of California as Pancreatic Cancer Month. And purple, as you mentioned, is the color of pancreatic cancer. And in, in that regard, Liz, I would like to give you uh, an awareness wristband for pancreatic cancer uh, from Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Uh, and it's got pancan.org, their uh, logo, and their name on it. And when people ask you if you Thank wear you. that, when people ask you it's what, inspirational. That, what that's about, it's about the fight on the deadliest cancer. Yeah. All right, and I like the motto too, let's wage hope, not lose hope. Right. And uh, I will wear this and, uh, and continue to think about everybody out there and, and uh, In fact, positive Pan energy. Ex thank you. And PanCan's uh, new, uh, new uh, branding is Wage Hope, okay. and which is powerful. And it's a relentless approach by, by this organization, which I'm honored to be this year. Uh, a national ambassador, volunteer ambassador for. And I was back in Washington in June uh, on the floor, uh, uh, not on the floor, but um, walking the halls of Congress, advocating uh, more research uh, funding from the federal government for it. When we started this show that you are definitely one of RPV's favorite past mayors and very popular, which is why we had Terry Hack, the president here of Terry Nader, stop by and see you. Um, you are special to her, and, and this resort is incredible, special, special to you, and you can talk about all that. Well, <laughs> um, while I was on uh, the, the uh, city council in the last decade, uh, um, we, in 2002, worked through and approved uh, Terranea. And then, um, and that was quite an undertaking. It's the largest project in the history of our city. It's turned out to be an incredible um, resort, uh, attracting people from all over the world, the country, 
uh, the state, the region, and of course the peninsula. And I know when you were diagnosed, because your house, I remember, was getting doing going under some construction. They right. opened your doors. This really became home to you. I know they call you the mayor of Terranea. I've heard <laughs> well. As well but <laughs> I, I don't know about that. But, yeah, but, but you came here. You stayed here during. Well, your I, I was fortunate um, to stay uh, after my surgery uh, for a few weeks uh, or, or so, um, while my house. You know, you don't pick when you get cancer, right. and you don't pick when you have life-saving surgery. And uh, as a consequence, um, I was very fortunate to be able to come here and stay here. Right, and like you say, you don't get to pick when this happens to you. Right. And uh, but the people watching, when that day comes, what what would you share with them to help them get through it? Um, you have to believe, as I said before, you have to take a very positive attitude, and you have to build a network of people around you, family and friends. Who support you. You can't uh, just buy into the statistics because for a lot of people the statistics in this disease are a big downer and, and they're, they're scary. Right. And so you have to wage hope, you have to have people around you waging hope for you. You have to seek out the best medical care you can and part of the challenge in, um, in getting um, the gold for uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, if I can mention that, is to uh, change the survival rate, double it by 2020, okay, which is six years away, almost five years away, from 6% to 12%. And that may not sound like a lot, but it would be a tremendous uh, um, benefit to a lot of people. And the fact of the matter is, we don't have enough researchers, we don't have enough doctors who uh, uh, completely understand pancreatic cancer, uh, all that has to change. You know, I mentioned earlier that uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, or PANCAN, uh, is deeply involved in, in funding grants. Over the span of their existence, they've funded over $20 million in research grants, and every year they bring in their research grantees uh, for a few days of a commonality of, of exposure to each other, which is an amazing collaboration of these people who are really going to change uh, the face of pancreatic cancer. Right. You gave me this in wonderful, wonderful fact sheet, and of course, if anyone goes on to pancan.org, you can get all this kind of facts and figures, but it was important to you, you wanted to talk about, you said mm -hmm. today, sort of the challenges you got to overcome and just what's the plan of attack. So, right. you know, you mentioned about not enough researchers and resources, and the fact that the clinical trial rate enrollment is too low. Right. Yeah, in fact, um, because it's such a deadly disease, and because um, somewhere between 75 percent and 80 percent of those diagnosed pass within the first year. Um, very few get into clinical trials. Uh, the statistic on that is 4.5 percent of pancreatic cancer patients get into uh, clinical trials. I was fortunate already to be in two and I may be in another. Um, but that's the rarity today. We have to increase that. We have to have greater ability to detect this disease and to treat this disease. I mean, you think about it, Katie Kirk lost her sister to pancreatic cancer. Uh, everyone, I think, knows that Steve Jobs died of pancreatic cancer. Um, turns out Jack Benny died of it, Joan Crawford died of it, uh, uh, Louis Armstrong died of it. There are a lot of celebrities that have been touched by this disease. We need more of them involved in this fight, too, to help uh, extrapolate to, out to uh, the general public. So as you're plodding along, are you seeing that uh, in, like Congress and the people that are going to make the difference are listening now? You've got their attention? Well, uh, I definitely think we have their attention because uh, two years ago, under the uh, stewardship of PANCAN, um, there was a, a bill passed in Congress when very few bills were passed in Congress called the Recalcitrant, Recalcitrant Cancer uh, Act, in which it uh, passed and was signed and required a uh, blueprint on how to approach pancreatic cancer and where the focus should be. And that gives the framework uh, from a congressional standpoint and from a national standpoint. Um, but again, uh, it's all about uh, raising funds uh, to fight this disease. Um, you know, when you think about other uh, cancers, for example, prostate cancer, which strikes men in great numbers, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of them are alive in five years. You go back to where we are with pancreatic at 6%, it's just unacceptable and it's got to change. 
Right. When you were diagnosed, you knew you were going to fight this, but did they say, look at Larry, this is where you're at, and this is your, what we think is going to happen to you? I mean, did they put it out there that you didn't have long to live, or you just... Well, no, because, uh, you know, I, again, you know, I think my journey has been somewhat u unique in the sense that at, I was uh, operable. Uh, as I said, 90% of those diagnosed, it's too late. It's metastasized beyond the pancreas. Uh, in, in my case, um, mine hadn't, uh, and so I was stage 2B. And within 10 days, I turned out uh, with one of the top surgeons in the country to have, in a seven-hour surgery, my uh, cancer removed. But it's come back. And so now I'm stage 4, uh, which means it's metastasized. and. Uh, you know, without being melodramatic, it's really a fight for my life. But I, I've got a great team. We have uh, several approaches, and I, I think I'm here for the long run. Yeah. Well, you're here for a purpose, and this cause has been amazing that they have you there as part of their team with the PanCan Network, and we want to keep saying that. And when, as we sort of wrap it up here, um, you also brought me information. It's, it's May, but put it on the calendar. The next really big thing is this purple stride. For Los Angeles, one of the things that uh, PanCan or Pancreatic Cancer Action Network does to raise awareness, to bring together the community involved with pancreatic cancers, they hold 60 events around the country uh, which are called Purple Strides, and it's a key fundraiser, uh, but it's also a, a key awareness uh, mechanism and uh, bringing together the community. The one in Los Angeles is always in May. It's the uh, first weekend in May this year, coming up in 2015, uh, May 2nd, Saturday, uh, at uh, Exposition Park. And uh, I'm on the executive committee for it. I chaired the executive committee last year for it, I mean this year for it. Right. And through the course of this fight for you, your lifestyle, I mean, obviously you eat better, I'm sure, and all of that, right. but you look amazing. I mean, well, I know you. obviously you're on still on these committees. You meet with the mayors of our, former mayors of RPV regularly. You, you keep going. Well, <laughs> you know, I, you know, that's my life, you know. Yeah. And, but, a, but a large part of my life now is now focusing on my disease, because it's there again, but also focusing on the bigger fight against pancreatic cancer. And, um, I will continue to do that as long as I'm around, and I believe I'm going to be around for a long time. We're glad you're going to be here. We need you here. Thank you. And we need to see you sport more purple socks. That's uh, yeah. well, the that's color, quite a statement, Larry. The, co the color purple happens to be my favorite color. It was before um, I was diagnosed, but it's the color of pancreatic cancer, and it's certainly my favorite color now. All right. Well, anything you want to add as we wrap it up, especially for someone that's watching that might just have found out that they've got this disease? Um, contact, uh, seriously contact uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Uh, they, will, they can help you in many, many ways uh, and believe that you can beat, beat the disease. But you need to act uh, quickly and get uh, the right information and the right treatment uh, protocol. Okay. Well, we're entering to the new year. Any uh, resolutions for you as you're going in? Um, <laughs> You know, uh, for me, it's enjoy every day as a gift because that's what it is. And, you know, we all get involved in our lives in the daily routines and, and, and things, but when you realize that their life is finite uh, and that you may be facing um, a disease that can take you out, uh, you appreciate every day as a gift. So that's my, uh, my thought is enjoy uh, every day as a blessing. Um, enjoy the people around you. Uh, my wife, Becky Clark, has been incredible um, during this, and uh, without her, I wouldn't be here. And uh, for everyone, um, have a great 2015. Stay healthy, but be aware of any symptoms that, that could be pancreatic cancer, and please think about donating to find a cure or at least find the advancement of this very, very deadly cancer. All right. Well, you continue to be an inspiration, and thank you for joining us here on Around the Peninsula. It's a great pleasure to be here with Larry Clark. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Don't forget to go on to pancan.org, check it out, and continue in waging hope for those out there with pancreatic cancer. And all the best to you in the new year. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>